Trailer Island podcast. Hello there. We're on the airwaves, on the air, on the air, on the podcast. We're waves. on the internet. <gasps> are we, we on the are internet? Streaming yeah. live to your ears from the island. Hello, everyone. How are you going? Yeah, you can't answer. Just use telepathy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna apologise. I just had a milkshake, so my my throat's a little hoarse. Yeah, you didn't, yeah. You didn't share any of it with us either on this island. I haven't had my blood sugar level is just so low. <laughs> my blood level is so low. <laughs> I don't even know how you managed to get a milkshake to the island, but I commend you for that effort yes yeah, it's, it's good don't look at certain things nipples around here <laughs> oh that's a lactating joke it is it is well they, right. made, they made one in the star wars film so i guess that's if true they can make oh, one in the star yeah, wars that, film, that green can... milk i did look over you and like sort of nod as well when i was drinking it yeah. so we're here to talk about movies <laughs> Yes. That's what we do. Yes, we are the Trailer Island Podcast and we're here to talk about films and their trailers. Did the film deliver what the... Tra- mm-hmm. Wait. Did the film deliver what the trailer... Yeah, that's yeah. right. Did yeah. the film deliver what the trailer promised? That's our brief. You've been saying that, you know, at the beginning <laughs> of each episode so far. I know, but like, I just... I haven't seen seen anyone else but you guys for like the last <laughs> however long it's been. So I'm, I want to apologise. I am just... I'm just for, for what now? Uh, just being a part of your life <laughs> constantly. <laughs> I really didn't expect this to happen. Yes, I. <laughs> I really haven't made a bad situation better. No, you haven't. Uh, so, <laughs> talking of making bad situations worse, that kind of that kind of segues into this film, doesn't it? Sure. Well, being the king of segues, Matthew, would you? <laughs> I'd love to. Nothing would give me greater pleasure, Alex. <laughs> what film are we talking about this week? We are talking about Knives Out. I am Detective Lieutenant Elliot. This is Trooper Wagner. We just want to ask a few questions. We understand the night of his demise, the family had gathered to celebrate your father's 85th birthday. How was it, by the way? The party, pre my dad's death. Oh, it was great. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to request that you all stay until the investigation is completed. What? Can we ask why? Has something changed? No. No, it hasn't changed, or no, we can't ask. I suspect foul play. And I have eliminated no suspects. <laughs> it's a twisted web. We are not finished untangling it, not yet. What is this? CSI KFC? <laughs> On Oh, some good uh, big brass action in there in terms of the music. I do love a big brass section. Mm. I, feel like the, I feel like you're trying to... No, look, good music in the trailer. <laughs> it's great. What is that? Who is that? Do we know who that is? I don't. Sinatra probably? Maybe. Oh, uh, possi- possibly. Uh, we'll, we'll try and find out by the end of the episode. There's probably people screaming at their phones or their radios right now. Going, this is a classic song, damn it. How could you not know what song it is? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Much so, like me when they used um, uh, Pink Floyd in the June trailer, I was like, "Oh, yeah. there are people out there who don't know what this song is, and that's disgusting." <laughs> See, I had no idea. I assumed it was someone like Van Morrison or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's not do this now, please. Okay, yes, all right. just started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the film *Knives Out* and directed by who? Joss Whedon. Ryan Johnson. Ah, yes, John. John- <laughs> Ryan Ronson. <laughs> Ryan Ronson. Ryan Johnson. <laughs> Ryan Johnson, who is of great renown. Um, he's directed uh, Looper Brick, I believe, is Brick? the first indie film he did, I think. Yeah, I think that's sort of um, the first film he got wide release on. Yeah, and he's very, very well known for making the excellent Last Jedi. Yes. Excellent yes. Star Wars film. A fantastic Star Wars film, and he's responsible for that, um, mm. which is great. And, he, mm. and, now he's, and now he's done this movie, which is a, a sort of... Agatha Christie style murder mystery, yeah. Um, bit of obviously a bit of Sherlock Holmes in there as well, and and it's absolutely terrific. I don't know why it feels like it lends itself more to an Agatha Christie movie than it would a, a Sherlock Holmes. I, I definitely agree with that. Yes, I, I think, think I think it's that ensemble cast thing. Yeah, that and yeah. It's, it's stuck in one place as well. Well, sort of isolated to one place throughout the 
the whole the plot. Most part, yeah. So how would we explain? We want to mer- we want to be delicate with spoilers, don't we? We do because I feel like it's definitely a film that you want to encourage someone who hasn't seen it before to go and watch. Yeah, because it is how everything unravels is done so well. And it takes up like two thirds of the movie as well. It's it is very it is very cool. Now this is a murder mystery, and in the trailer we find out that this is a very rich family. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and they are celebrating their father's birthday, who is probably in his eighties, and he's found dead. And the film is there is an investigation into what they believe could be his murder. Yeah, and so the police are there. Doing their thing. And then alongside the police, the police haven't asked him to be there. We have our central detective character played by Daniel Craig. Yes. And he's also there doing his own separate investigation, Mm -hmm. which is, I think, a fantastic kind of... It's been done before, but to be... It's utilised here, that kind of trope of the police are clueless and you've got one hero detective that actually knows what's going on. And it's done so well in this that it's a lot of fun to watch the police go... Sort of get the wrong end of the stick and then he goes, oh, actually, I think this is what's going on kind of thing. I think part of the fun in that is, um, uh, uh, would you call um, Benoit Blanc, Daniel Craig's character, the, the protagonist or sort of... I don't think he is the protagonist. No, I think, think it's... I forget the character's name. Marta. Um, Marta, thank you. Marta, yeah. the, um, the, the housekeeper slash helper of um, Thromby, played by Christopher Plummer, the person who dies at the beginning of this movie. I would definitely say she's the protagonist. This is her story, I think. In Benoit this film. would probably be the the Obi Wan to her story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's nice to see that he is this world class detective, but he gets things wrong. Yeah, he's not perfect. He isn't perfect, unlike your Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, it well, takes him a while to figure things out. Yeah, but he he's a very interesting character. I do wonder if Daniel Craig's ability to do American accents is limited to <laughs> a southern. <laughs> I think draw. it might be. Uh, what, um, what is it? Um, Logan Lucky, he has the same accent. That's him, right. He? Yeah. Yeah. Now, this, the family in this film, the father is very well off. He is mm-hmm. a crime murder mystery novelist. Yeah. And his family, in their different respects, uh, either control part of it or are simply leeches to his. They benefit off it. Benefit to yeah. his, his uh, wealth. And really, they're all kind of terrible people yeah and yeah you, it's, you find it really hard to back any of them in this film yeah and you do wonder whether the the actors had a wonderful time just you can being feel jerks it. you can feel <laughs> like just the enthusiasm that everyone on that cast had being there oh know? i think they're having the time of their lives yeah. to be like, like i think it would have been a yeah a fun movie to be a part of absolutely because they all get to yell at each other at you know certain points and they all have their moments. So Ryan Johnson's script is is terrific in allowing all these different characters to actually breathe. For a film that's only about two hours, I think, isn't it? It's not overly long. No, it's it's it's, um, it's a good length. It's the length it should be. I don't think it's overly long for a murder mystery. You still get a really clear sense of who every single person is, and that's sort of I think rare for a, a modern film with so many characters to get that right. I mean, obviously the Avengers got it right, especially in the last two. I was amazed that you know a film of two and a half hours can or three hours can do that, but then to do it with this and have such a convoluted story—is it fair to say it's del- deliberate, do- deliberately convoluted? I don't know. Maybe not convoluted. Perhaps ultimately the reveal isn't that complicated. No, but they never are. But are they? but the way that they get to it is intensely complex because what the film does it gives you the opportunity to. Yes, and try yeah. and work out what's yeah. happened. You are given all the clues that you need for the most part to work out what's going on. Whereas a film like we've done in the past, uh, The Good Liar, for example, yeah. where the reveal comes out of nowhere and you didn't really have an opportunity to guess that There anything. weren't enough seeds planted. No, that's yeah. right. In this case, you really you want to try and work it out. The <laughs> film encourages you to go, this is a murder mystery. Can you work out who, it, who did what? I suppose the first 10 minutes sort of planting those scenes as well. First 10 minutes is is devoted to Benoit and the detective sort of interviewing each member of the family. Which is actually like a stage play. It is, yeah. Yeah, but unlike other films that have tried to do that, this one actually works quite well because it's the pacing is... 
th- th- it's a huge argument as to whether or not theatre translates to the silver screen adequately or successfully. But this film, I think, is probably the closest or such a good example of a very word-heavy script working as a visual medium. Mm-hmm. And, th- and this film's fantastic with that. The, the visuals in this just keep you hooked. And obviously the way it's shot, the colours they've used, they've got this beautiful old house. You know, that looks great when photographed. I yeah. want that house. Yeah. It's that is an amazingly beautiful. cool house. Set design in this film is just amazing. Yeah. Like, the yeah. house looks lived in. It looks real. You know, you wouldn't guess, for, you know, have any sort of second guess that it might be a set. Yeah, which it probably is. It really, the film really encourages you into the world. Yes. And you don't feel awkward about being there. You feel like you're a fly. You're really a fly on the wall watching this all unravel. Yeah, you you get you, to go along on the journey with them, which is that key thing, isn't it? Yeah, you're talking about giving the characters an opportunity to breathe. And Steve, with you saying, you know, we see them all interviewed individually and then we see them all with their individual reactions uh sorry their individual interactions with how their idea of the night played out yeah and so you see all of that it's not it's shown to you it's kind of playing on the um unreliable narrator thing with their flashbacks you never quite you you never know which flash flashback is either wildly inaccurate or closer to truth you just don't know so in this trailer we get a sense of the tone of this movie and the mm. humour that is inherent in, in this script. And I think Ryan Johnson clearly is quite... I think he enjoys that because he definitely introduced that kind... his style of comedy into The Last Jedi. It's not so evident in um, Looper, I don't think. But um, I, I was interesting because this trailer came out pretty close around Last Jedi yeah. being out. And I remember looking at it going, I can, I can tell that these are, this is made by the same filmmaker. He's got that kind of, and I mean this in a really good way, he's got that slightly moronic sense of humour. Sort of things, he sort of laughs at things that perhaps are, you know, some, for example, someone slipping down the stairs or something and it's the, the comedy comes from them trying to save the fall, you know, that kind of slapstick kind mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. But he does that with words, if that makes sense. Yeah, the, the comedy comes straight from dialogue. Yeah. And I think it's probably more... You know, uh, the comedy it springs from reactions between the two char- uh, between characters. Absolutely, and there are a, lot, a lot of the scenes are basically getting two characters alone together, yeah. and those are great sort of little interactions that happen between all these people. I think it's really nice to see Ryan Johnson sort of hone his craft a little bit as well. Yep, yep. Um, he made Brick, you know, twenty odd years ago. Really, that um, long ago. Brick is sort of like this this modern, you know, um, what's well, it called? Film noir. Sort of mm-hmm. films. Is it a de- de- I haven't seen it. Is it a detective film? Is it, it? It is. It is in essence. It's about like this this teenager who's trying to solve the mystery of of a th- uh, I think it's the the murder or death of his ex girlfriend. Right. And so it's, it's very moody, and it's very it's very like harkens back to that film noir. Um, and it's nice to see how that's evolved into Knives Out. He's yeah. injected a lot more humor, and he's obviously got. A bigger tool chest as well. The the cast in this is is uh, I don't know whether the 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 murder mystery is my favorite element to it or the actual just the cast in itself. Yeah. So yeah, let, let's go through the cast actually because like, we've mentioned uh, Daniel Craig and a few others. Uh, have we mentioned Chris Evans? No, not in yet. This? Oh, my Captain, favorite. Captain my America. MVP. Captain America himself is alongside James Bond in this film. Um, we've got Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, uh, she she is terrific in this. But um, I, has, I, I should say maybe not as terrific as Michael Shannon, who is poss- Michael Shannon, yeah. possibly the standout because uh, he's a side character. Yeah. He plays um, one of the sons of, oh, yeah, that's right. He's yeah, one of the sons yeah. Yeah. of, of, of um, Thronby, Thornby? Thorn- he runs Thrum- the publishing Thrumby. house. He runs the publishing house and he's been like spent his whole life trying to get film rights to make money off of it. And his dad's always refused that. But he has like just these little, they're not even dull. They're just reactions he does yeah. to stuff that are so funny. And and they just sort of gel so nicely. Um, who else have we got? Two Australians, yeah. Tony Collette. Yes, she's actually quite good in. She's very I, good in making you hate her in this. Oh, she does a wonderful job of you going. <laughs> you are just a terrible person. Yeah, a very slimy kind of. She just wants money. That's all she wants. She's not even you know technically related to to Harlan. Yeah, she's that's the, right. She's the the widow of the other son. Mm. Uh, it hangs around like a bad smell. And she's joined by another Australian, Catherine Langford. Who we a, may have seen in the Netflix series 13 Reasons mm-hmm. Why. I think that was her big breakout. Yeah, I never saw that. Hey. She was very good in it. Okay. She, she was fantastic in it. 
the story is probably a bit long for what it really is. Oh, okay, but sure. Anyway, we. But anyway, so it's a not what we're here to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Don Johnson continues his his uh, he's, resurgence. Yes, he, he's good. Had a big part in uh, Watchmen, uh, same time last year as well. Oh, in the TV show Watchmen. Yep, yep. Okay, sure. Uh, and he's, he's, I would say he's probably on par with Michael Shannon. He's, he's that good. The, are they, are, they really are all really good in this. Uh, it comes down, I think, to them being great actors. You've got a great script. And I think you've got a director who, judging just from the set design, the script, it took him about five years to write this, I think. He's got such an attention to detail that he's managed to sort of help them hone. those just little, like, tiny close-up reactions that any good actor can do. But he uses them to a very great effect in this. I sort of like side glances, you know, that kind of thing. It felt like he enjoyed the challenge of making this film. Yeah, I, w- I think he definitely did. I mean, he's already said he's going to do a sequel, I think, with, with Daniel Craig returning. Mm-hmm. But when you look at this and you go, well, I can see why it took him five, however many years to write. And I can't imagine him churning these out very quickly. You know, like you need to take care of this kind of thing. Because as far as I'm aware, there are no holes in this movie. I'm sure there are some, like like every film does, but there are no major plot holes. Nothing off the top of my head. Nothing that's really been like come to the forefront through yeah. the internet. And this film's been out for a year and a half, about that? Two years, a year and a half? This has been a year. Has it? Has it? I reckon it's been about maybe End of 2018? Year. Possibly. Well, I feel like this was end of 2019, was it? Someone maybe. bring up the date already. <laughs> hey Siri, when did Knives Out come out? You have internet access? He's getting, very... mi- he's getting milkshakes, internet access. <laughs> I've, pa- I've painted a woman's face in the coconut. I've been calling her Siri. Ah, uh-huh. ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. So it's not an apple, it's a coconut. <laughs> she Your new eye coconut. I, I, I nut? I nut. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been calling. <laughs> the actual so, uh, um, oh God. regardless of how long this film has been out, basically it's been out long enough that if there, were, if there was a major plot hole, someone somewhere would have picked, yeah. it, picked it out. Yeah, and it's curious you mentioned about them making a second one. This one being called Knives Out. Like, are they going to call it Knives Out Two? But yeah. it's focusing on the Daniel Craig character. Like, the, would they the, call the, they name it by his yeah. name or something? Because the or? Knives Out title works specifically for this case. That's right. It doesn't. It, I don't think it would apply anywhere yeah, else. Like thematically, and also just. Thrombry's a, a crime writer. You know, he's got that big chair. It's in the trailer. The big chair with the knives, and like yeah. it's. Knives are a running thing, like sort of in in this movie, and I think to do then yeah Daniel Craig's character in a sequel, which is great, it's they can't call it Knives Out. No. It'll be like the uh, the the Fugitive Cinematic Universe where it was the Fugitive, then it was U.S. Marshals. And I have and it's seen, just Tommy Lee Jones in these movies because I love the Fugitive, and I know we're not here to talk about the Fugitive, but I love that movie, and I haven't seen that little spin off they did. It's it's good. I, I've heard it's good. Yeah, it's another good whodunit. Well, what's what's Craig's Character name? Benoit Blanc. Benoit Blanc. Benoit Blanc. I wonder if they call it Blanc de Blanc or something. I don't know. Blonky investigates. Bl- <laughs> <laughs> Ye old Blonky comes down. Well, I mean, the, the Hercule Poirot. Kentucky Fried Crime. <laughs> <laughs> the Hercule Poirot series doesn't really follow a, a sort of a standard name. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Does it? But I think that was the benefit of them being books. This being a film universe. It's almost like they have to do like an Empire Strikes Back and go, you know, knives out. The Empire Strikes Back, you know, that kind of title. I, I, that remains to be seen. I'm glad that they're sticking with the Daniel Craig character. Yeah. I think, you know, um, as far as we're aware, this is he's got one more Bond film to come out and then he's done with that. So it's good that he can potentially now take ownership of a completely original character that he clearly enjoys playing. I, th- I think he, looking at his films, I think he enjoys making, he may, enjoyed making this more than he does some of the James Bond films. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, I no comment. He was definitely not salty after this film, that's for sure. Because he sort of walks through some of those Bond films. Uh, yeah, the Spectre's so good though. I do agree with you. I, I don't think I would like to see, as much as I do love her, I don't think I'd like to see Anna de Armas solve mysteries every movie. I Yeah, I don't think it would make sense for her to be a sidekick. <laughs> Even though she is sort of one of the main characters, she is certainly along for the ride. Like she doesn't, <laughs> I don't feel like a lot of the things that she does, she doesn't push the story along. She's just sort of oh, I would disagree. part of the story as it goes along. It, it, she, it, she's there hard, for it. It's but hard to talk about without, um, I, yeah. I don't want to ruin obviously the ending of this movie because it's still relatively new. But do, um, do, you, do you see what I'm, do you see like what I'm saying though about her character and her involvement in anything that's gone on? She's, she's sort of very reactive. She's not proactive to, like, yes, she is in some cases, but for the most part, she is just part of this 
rolling ball of things that happen. I think you could uh, make that argument from maybe the first third of the film. Uh, not to spoil anything, but I would say the the the, the final two thirds, she definitely has a lot, a lot of agency there and she definitely has her hand on the, the plot throttle. I would definitely okay. agree with you for the last half of this movie, yes. And I think everyone sort of takes a back seat when Benoit at the very end is... Yeah. Well, that's his moment, you know. And what a moment it is. Like, <laughs> there are you know, the classic, you, know, you get the TV series where you're given all these options, you know, the weekly murder mystery TV show, right? Yeah, yeah. Where it's fairly, like, they can punch them out pretty easily how it happens. But this mm. is really a really tight... It, that's the thing. Well like, written, well I devised. Can see why it took him so long? Because when you do get to the bit where they solve the crime, like that's not a spoiler that they solve the crime. I mean, you expect that, but um, it's, an answer comes. An uh, you get an answer, and it's so watertight. It really is really impressive, and you you really are guessing about what is going to happen right into, the, and even like the last five minutes, you're still worried about the safety of characters. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, you never quite know what's going to happen. And I don't think it's been a while since I've had a film where I was just like not looking at my watch, <laughs> wondering Definitely how wasn't the case. No, no, I don't. How, I don't. how much longer the film was going to take? Unlike Justice League, I think it'd probably have like <laughs> I, I would contend there's maybe one or two slow moments in the film, but okay. I think I think the entertainment value of of just the rest of the film sort of really outweighs that, though. There there were certainly moments where I was like. About 30 seconds before something happened, I was like, oh, but then this was this. And the film would then address it and you'd be like, yes, I was right. And then the film would go somewhere else and I'd be like, oh, I didn't quite get the whole story. <laughs> I, I'm, not as, I'm not as clever as I thought it was. But that's the fun of it. You know, that is the fun of these type of movies, like the murder onto your orient, blah, 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 murder on the Orient Express, which came out a couple of years ago now, the Kenneth Branagh one. We all know, I mean, well, it's, a, it's an old book. I hadn't actually read the book before I saw it, but I have read the book. The film's been made before. Most people know how that film yeah. ends. But you still watch it going, this is terrific, you know, and you enjoy it. And so it's nice to have, on the flip side of that, it is nice to have a fresh one where you literally have no idea what's going to happen. And it's, that's really fun. Yeah, and when we are oversaturated with superhero films and, yeah. and the like at the moment, I feel like this is a really a good gateway film into just changing your palette yeah. with what kind of films you want to watch. So this is a really easy watch. It doesn't ask you to think too much. It, uh, it makes you ask the question of try and work things out. But for the most part, you know, you can just go along and not have to think about things and you still get that payoff at the very end. Yeah. So if you are someone who, I guess like us, you know, we are kind of stuck watching a lot of those superhero films because they are easy. They're easy to watch. Um, Some of them are actually very good. Yeah, I'm not saying they're not, <laughs> but I'm saying that if you are slightly, you know, have any sort of sort of concern about changing the palette of films that you want to see, is that this one is a really good way of getting into something different. I completely agree with that. Yeah. So yeah, that would be my advice about this film. Yeah, it's, it is. It is marvelous. I honestly can't think of anything negative about this film to say. Really, I really do ad adore just everything it's trying to do which it succeeds at. It was a real treat, I think. This film was a real treat. So I think it's quite easy to say that, um, you know, with a lot of other films that we've sort of been slightly nostalgic about, um, that we are all quite happy with it. Now, I was thinking of asking the Time Tug Captain to come out oh. for this film, but I feel It's a like new film. It's probably new enough that we didn't have to ask him to bring it all the way back. Oh, so got a 24 month limit. No, we buddy. don't. No, we no have it's nothing. okay, Captain. It's okay. We have nothing for you today. You don't have to worry about it. It's all right. This is my Cajun accent. Ah, it's your what accent? My Cajun accent. Your Cajun accent. Captain, can you just, just jump back on the boat? We, it's okay. We'll, we'll get you back another time. Oh, milkshakes as well. Can't have Steve's milkshake. Okay. Steve, can you just come back? Just, just, yep. Thank you. You seem nice. <laughs> he, well, he only talks to you, so, you know. <laughs> I've never spoken to him before in my life. That's a, that's a lie. Right. <laughs> On that note, I think, I think it's fair to say, uh, who would like to go first with their rating? Yeah, I'll go. Do we want to work out what we want to do it out of? Yeah, sure. What's it going to be out of? Tropical knives with which to slice pineapples. So just machetes? Yeah, but it doesn't uh, sound as good as... Trump. What about like a like a, a reef knife? 
uh, a knife made out of reef. A knife of made reef. out of reef? Out of coral? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Coral knife. Coral knife? All right, coral okay. exists on reefs. That's right. I forgot about the concept of nature. Nature diversity. Uh, this one for me is an easy five coral knives out of five. And I think that is just because it is, it's, it's, it's an excellently crafted film. And I have no trouble with the rewatchability as well. This is something I like, I'd come back to maybe every two or three months. It's just that entertaining to watch. I would completely agree with that. Yeah. And it looks, it just looks, it looks amazing. It's just, it's funny. It sounds excellent. And you get wrapped up in the mystery, even though you've seen the mystery about five different <laughs> times and you go, like, who's going to do it this time? And it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I am I am right on board with you as well. I'm going to give it five too. It was just such a fresh new film to enjoy with a fresh new story. And it's just, it's it's tight. The cast is fantastic. I enjoyed basically every minute of it. I was challenged to try and work out what was going on. I was reminded that I wasn't smart enough to work things out. And ultimately, it was just a really good film that I enjoyed. So I'm going to give it five as well. The fact that I can, yeah, rewatch this over and over again, like like Stephen, I think like yourself, Alex, and not get bored of it in terms of just watching this thing unravel, even though I know what happens is, I think, a real testament to it. So, yeah, obviously, no surprises. It's a five from me as well. Terrific movie. Well, that makes things pretty easy then, doesn't it? <laughs> That's good. Very good. Well, uh, 15 out of 15. It's not bad. Well, it's, it's, it's very, very it's good. Actually, it's very good. It's well earned. <laughs> Uh, we have been the Trail Island Podcast. You can find us from wherever you get your podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your platform of choice. Or you can even head to the website www.trailisland.com.au. You can find all of our back catalogue there. Plenty to choose from. Um, it's been another week. It certainly has been another week. Remember, you can always find us on you know, your iPhone or your iNut if you're so inclined. Yep, too, true, 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 true. Uh, there's <laughs> a, lot a Facebook of things on my iNut. Yes, there's, there's also the Facebook page where you can send us a request. You can also send us an email at contact at trailerisland.com.au. We really appreciate it when you send things in because it gives us things to talk about. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a favourite film or anything, do let us know and we will do it. Absolutely. Uh, we like being challenged. We talked this week about getting out of our comfort zones with films. So if someone wants to suggest something that's completely left field, I think that'd be great. Absolutely. Please do that. We have been the Trailer Island Podcast. I've been Alex. I've been joined by... Steve. And Matthew. And we will catch you on the next episode of the Trailer Island Podcast. Ta-ta. This is a Narrative Network podcast.